The following video is brought to you by Squarespace. Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today, and we're talking about something that's near and dear to the heart of this channel. Of course, that means the audience and in turn gamers abroad, which is single player games. You love them. I love them. EA used to hate them. They love them now. Single player games are the future. But of course, with the new generation of technology, we have our beautiful Series X and S, we have the wonderful PlayStation 5. We're wondering what will next gen games look like? And of course, how will single player games evolve? Well, that's coming in the form of map changes, seemingly live service elements and other concerning methods that don't excite me as a single player traditionalist who likes a game that starts and finishes and occasionally choice and consequence that allows me to replay that game. It seems like for some companies, that is not the future. And of course, as we are in an industry that likes to follow trends, I can see a lot of these development methods bleeding into other studios in different manners. And so I'm a little concerned. Now you may think it's a bit proactive because a lot of the stuff we're talking about is three to five years away. But of course, as games evolve and they start their development in their four to five year cycles, this can become a problem or a pretty cool thing very quickly. So I want to go ahead and just dive headfirst into a lot of reports surrounding GTA 6, Assassin's Creed Infinity, and to some extent, Halo Infinite. But first, a word from our sponsor. Oh, Mr. Bethesda, you're out of costume. Huh? Wait, no, can't, can't look. It's not what it looks like. Yeah, so you do get your outfit somewhere. Uh, do, do you mind telling me, I don't know, where'd you pick it up? I got these suits off a website built on Squarespace. Just like Mr. Bethesda, with Squarespace, you can connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members-only content, manage your members, send email communications, and leverage audience insights all on one easy-to-use platform. You can even extend Squarespace's already powerful e-commerce capabilities with Squarespace extensions. And these third-party tools will help you manage inventory, promote products like Mr. Bethesda's suit jacket, and so on and so forth. So if that interests you, go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash MrMattyPlays to save 10% off on your first purchase of a website or domain. Let's get it started with Grand Theft Auto 6, a game that we seemingly thought would never happen because GTA 5 still tops the charts. Still, with all of its re-releases, everything it does, it is still somehow there. It is like a cockroach. Just, it, you can't do anything to get rid of it, okay? You can nuke it. Not going anywhere. That That's what GTA 5 is. So a report came out from an industry insider, Tom Henderson, who detailed some stuff about GTA 6. The most standout part of it to me was the map is indeed a return to Vice City. It is not the largest map of all time, but reportedly a big part of the new game is the world evolving in time, which is compared to Fortnite map changes as it will get bigger and shift through added DLC. The game is in the very early stages of development, as I said, and Henderson doesn't believe it'll be here until 2024 or 2025. The primary reason for this is, as we said at the top of the show, GTA 5 continues to make absurd amounts of money. And the other standout moment was cryptocurrency will play some role in the game, but hopefully just as an in-game economy. Now let's start off with the good before I jump to some of my concerns, which is I think evolving maps can be cool if we're playing an RPG. Of course, my RPG brain goes right there. I think of side quest characters, who maybe had their arcs cut short or there's more to be told and you're wondering, do we have to wait for a sequel to hear more about this character and what happened? Will they be a playable party member? What's gonna happen with them? And that something can be added like a new region and that character will go to that region and they can continue their story. That's exciting to me on a certain level um, because it doesn't feel like you've been dropped into a world in a time period and you're sort of locked there. The world moves over time. However, that's where a lot of my praise stops. And I'm sure the audience, you can pick up some more praise that I'm not thinking of, but I'm just trying to be real when I say, this doesn't sound good for a multitude of reasons. For me to properly get into that though, we need to hear the other side, which is what's going on with Assassin's Creed. And then I think you'll start to get an idea of like, okay, this isn't just a one-time thing. Rockstar has tons of money. I think they're in a unique position where they will be afforded the luxury of saying, hey, we can keep this single player. Hey, we don't gotta charge them. We can just drop these updates into the single player world free of charge 
anyone else though I, I don't know if they got that gta 5 money so let's take a look at assassin's creed infinity this report comes from jason trier of bloomberg where it says assassin's creed a video game franchise set in huge worlds where each one can take hundreds of hours to complete is getting even bigger a new project which is known inside ubisoft entertainment by the code name assassin's creed infinity sets out to create a massive online platform that evolves over time according to people familiar with its development whereas previous assassin's creed games each unfolded in specific historical settings such as ancient Greece or Egypt, Infinity will contain multiple settings with room to expand to others in the months and years following its debut, said the people who asked not to be identified discussing a project under development. Individual games on the platform might look and feel different, but they will all be connected. It may sound familiar because last year, Halo Infinite talked about how this is a part of a 10-year plan where they're sort of doing away with the traditional sequels and they're diving into, well, this game being the platform. So they say it's not going to become Destiny, but that story content will be added and number sequels as a conventional way of doing things will be a part of the past. Most notably, this is an impact of Game Pass, but still, they are planning to kind of ditch the idea of doing another Halo game and just releasing it on the Infinite platform in the name of a large update. And I know that was a lot of just information overload before I could even get to my discussion, so I appreciate those of you who are still here sitting with me. But now I'm going to talk... I'm gonna totally admit right off the rip, I'm gonna sound like a traditionalist. I'm gonna sound like you might call me a boomer even, I don't know, but whatever. I like my single player games and I know that they're not gonna go anywhere. I know that, you know, two things can't exist at once. I know that that's gonna happen, that we're gonna have our traditional single player stuff. But of course, you want some of those leading big AAA IP. And when everything's becoming a platform, we got three instances here of evolving stuff I'm just wondering, of course, how this will be handled, because when you hear evolving, living, breathing, to me, that jumps into monetization, right? There's no way in hell that these worlds, except maybe Rockstar, who has the financial capability to do so with the revolving door of money, which is GTA 5, to say, hey, we're going to drop these updates and we're making money elsewhere. No worries. Same thing with Halo Infinite. I'm a little less concerned about that because of Microsoft being at their back. But that doesn't mean that a business is not going to operate as a business and give us everything for free. At some point, monetization will be injected. Most notably, the concern is with Ubisoft. And what's hilarious is we're talking about a company that, while I enjoyed Assassin's Creed Valhalla, I enjoyed Watch Dogs Legion, I understand these games are big and to some very bloated. And the idea that a company who's one of their biggest points of critique outside of a toxic workplace environment is how bloated their games are and that they're making an endless, a friggin' endless Assassin's Creed game blows my mind. It really does. And there's cool stuff there, right? The evolving side stories, the idea of a new location being added to Assassin's Creed to explore. Yeah, that's great and all. And just one more hilarious note is that after all this time of people just saying, give us Assassin's Creed Japan, they're like, anything but that maybe it's one of these settings we don't know but more to my point is that single player games are changing in the coming generation we don't know how drastic it'll be how many will dive into this maybe they'll see what gta is doing and what assassin's creed is doing and try their own way of doing it but like i said boomer moment i'm gonna put it plain and clear i like when my games start and finish i know all you watching this have a life of some extent okay maybe some of us out there are no lives okay but so my point is a lot of us have stuff to do and there's something nice about picking up a game, playing it, beating it, and knowing it's done. Knowing you finished it, that you don't gotta wait for the next update, that they don't got their hooks in you and they're like, ah, come back, new update, Maddie. It's like, God, man, let me just live my life. The pressure to stay engaged and the ability to fall behind, literally trying to trigger FOMO and get you to hop into the game so you don't miss out on something. That's what I don't like about evolving platforms. And while in some instances it can be cool, we know this industry too well. I can't imagine it's just Assassin's Creed doing it. It's just, of course, Rockstar doing it. We're gonna see more. And I imagine even Elder Scrolls 6 will tap into this in some way. They've said for a while, hey, we're waiting on technology. GTA 5 comes out in 2013. Skyrim comes out in 2011. They both don't release a new game in those series for over a decade. And you're telling me that when they both come back around the same time period, I would not be surprised if they're sharing that idea of evolving world. Now, look, one thing that I've always said would be cool with next gen is instead of one open world, you have multiple. 
but I'm a believer also of quality over quantity. I would take one finely crafted, well done, exciting, interesting, open world packed with unique content that makes sense on why it exists instead of giving me two open worlds bloated it never ends you're here this is your living breathing world it evolves with your choice just spare me the pr stuff man i get it it's important of course with game pass becoming a factor now and a bigger factor by the 2024 25 window we're talking and when you look at all the other services that are forming in the industry and where cloud gaming is going yeah traditional gaming in the sense of buying your 60 dollar game and playing that it can be uh it can be looking a little grim let's be honest you know i think you're still going to be going out there and getting your physical copies but maybe those physical copies are for games that require the internet and require these downloads and i just think the retro scene in the next like three years is just gonna blow up because uh people are going to miss just a traditional game release uh it's really interesting to not to talk about myself too much but to watch from the outside as someone who is working on something that by the way is a traditional single player game it will not evolve just watching these other companies seek out the recurrent revenue that they need through these even jeopardizing what a single player game is uh, i can't help but be concerned now there's a separation here is that assassin's creed infinity is unknown whether or not it's multiplayer uh, it seems like that's up in the air according to jason trier where he says like it may or may not include multiplayer but it is requiring an online platform Whereas something like GTA, I do anticipate it being a single player thing. And Rockstar does phenomenal player world interactions where you'll find these crazy hidden stories there. And the fact that they can maybe pepper a couple more in there. And maybe we can get to that traditional Rockstar of single player DLC. Like people love Undead Nightmare, the Ballad of Gay Tony and so on and so forth. Like, yeah, people really miss that Rockstar. And I do too. I loved when Rockstar was all about single player. So if this is their ideal hybrid. They're the company I trust to do it right. It's that everyone who's going to follow suit, uh, I don't know, sorry. So yeah, I'm admittedly uh, a bit concerned. I think that this can turn out really cool and there can be some great changes for single player games that turn these into actual worlds. But I also think it's a slippery slope. And on the other side, you can tumble down that mountain and we can go down a path that may be very bleak for single player games. And I don't want to be too doomsday and cataclysmic. I think that shit's so tired on YouTube. I, I get so bored of seeing the people who are trying to fear monger on YouTube. I get it, man. I really do. So I don't want you to think I'm trying to rile you up. It's, it's just me telling you my thoughts. I know that a lot of YouTubers like to prey on that shit, but like, I'm just saying I can't help but look at this and go, okay, this is a step in the direction that I'm not too excited for. Um, and, 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 you know, we even saw it with reports of Bioware. Now it's single player. But Bioware's recent game was also going to be live service, but it was also going to be formed as a single player title. Man, really? What is happening? What is happening? I I, I get it. Money matters and, and shareholders demand more. But there's got to be a way to meet in the middle where, where we can make our money and make our cool single player games. And I think that's why you're seeing people flock to Microsoft, flock to PlayStation, Nintendo, and just let them handle the financials while they just work on the creative stuff because they don't got to worry and the money's coming in regardless. Like working with Xbox, Microsoft has Xbox as their play toy, right? So you go and work with Xbox because it's like, well, we're going to be fine no matter what. They're not going to come in and tell us to go make live service games. At least they, you would hope not. So I can't help but look at the whole situation and just get a little concerned, just a little bit, right? Like I don't want to sit here and start shaking in my sheet. Let, shaking my sheet, wow. <laughs> shaking in my seat and going, oh man, it's over. But this could be the slippery slope, I feel. So we'll see how it develops. I'm keeping an open mind. I'm going to see how these games look. They're years away. We're going to see how things transform. I also wanted to add in, too, Kojima has some type of cloud game in the works. So these games, they're changing. They're changing how they're made. And eventually, it's just going to matter about the product. And with the ease of access of Game Pass, and I'm sure many other competitors, it's going to be a very interesting conversation. So I leave it in your hands. I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts in the comments down below. Other than that, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below. A big thank you to all the patrons, all the members who let me sit down here and just get a little worried. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.